Hey guys, how is it going? Welcome to the first bottle episode for 2020. If you're a regular on my channel, or just, you know, the furry fan in general, you would know that fursuiting is a very popular hobby that a lot of people put an insane amount of passion into. There are plenty of fursuiters out there who really should be professional performers. However, fursuiting can be really difficult to explain to someone who just really doesn't understand it at all, with plenty of people just dismissing it entirely because it's too unusual for them to wrap their heads around. So, that's why today I would like to talk about one of my favourite TV shows, The Masked Singer, and how it helps the public to understand first inning just a little bit easier. Spoiler warning though, I will be revealing some of The Masked Singer's identities in this video, so if you're still catching up on episodes, maybe come back here a bit later. But if you're not overly familiar with The Masked Singer, let me give you a rundown on what it is. The show began in 2015 in South Korea and was called King of Ma Singer. And then, for what I can assume is to its immense popularity, in 2019 it was brought to the USA, the Netherlands, Mexico, Germany, Australia, and many more countries all airing their own versions. The way the show works is you have 12 mystery celebrities, each with their own specially made costumes that completely conceal their face and sometimes their entire body. They're all given their own names that match the costume, and whenever they talk, their voice is changed. I absolutely love how insane the variety is between each costume. Like, you've got mascot suits, extravagant stage show outfits, my nightmares, and ones that I'm pretty sure are just straight up fursuits. All fully custom made just for the show by some extremely skilled professionals. Each episode, a few of them will take turns performing a particular song that they've chosen, the judges will then try and guess who they think is under the mask, and then the audience votes on whose performance they like the best. The person with the least amount of votes takes off their mask at the end of the episode. This keeps going each episode until there's only one masked singer left, who is then declared the winner, and unmasked anyway. Not all the celebrities are professional singers either. They'll also throw in actors and professional sport players to mix things up and really make those guesses difficult. The singing in each performance is pre-recorded, otherwise it would all sound like this. But they still have to get up on stage with those hot stage lights blaring at them while dancing around as they really perform their song. A lot of those costumes look way heavier than a fursuit, so props to them for getting up there and making it look easy. Okay, so what does this have to do with understanding fursuiting then? There's a very common theme among a lot of the contestants though. It's been impossible to change the way people see me. Until now. Who would have thought that years later, I would fall in love with performing as a leopard? It's almost like becoming this character has given me the childhood I never had. I talk to Monster. I look her right in the one big eye and say, we can do this. But Flamingo will always and forever be a part of me. And I think I'm gonna make Mr. Fox my friend for the rest of my life. My part is just getting to be you know, I mean, I'm 5'8". So, you, know, you put this on, you got some huge big wings that span out three metres, and all of a sudden you're 10 foot tall. They often talk about how they've found a freedom in the anonymity that comes with their costume, and how they've sort of made a real connection with the character they've been given. While there are lots of different reasons why people first it, I feel like this is definitely one of the most common ones. There's just something so magical about getting to be someone who's so wildly different in appearance and anything about yourself you might feel a little bit subconscious is now gone and it can imbue you with a sense of confidence you never even knew you had. Which is exactly what a lot of the Marcia contestants felt about the unique costumes they chose and they even got pretty emotional when they had to be unmasked and wouldn't get to be their character again. I'm actually really sad that I'm saying goodbye to Spider because I felt like in that last performance, myself and Spider became one. Bye buddy. It's been fun. It's been real. You ready? Oh! <laughs> I really think someone needs to introduce a lot of these guys to first inning. The thing about this is that they look absolutely fantastic, but there's no airflow in them. You can't hear properly, and they're really, really hot, but they're so beautiful. It's like all fashion, you know, you suffer for your art. This just feels good to not wear this, guys, to be honest. That's very heavy. It's very heavy. <laughs> I've been having fur balls for two weeks, and so people keep hearing me, you know, spitting and thinking I'm doing noises on the mics, but she's got the finest fur. Shout out to the mascots. Inside uh, one of these 
it was so hot. Like this had a fan in it, and it was still like it was so hot. It was so hard. So all those sports mascots or whatever you do as a mascot, how do you guys? Any persons out there watching this and like relating hard right now? Anyway, I really believe that this helps the perception of fursuits because it's basically the same thing, but from an unbiased source. Not in a way that we're going to like convert everybody into fursuiters and fursuits will be normalized though. More just to help people understand why. Why do you do this? What is the point? To which my usual answer is it's like mascotting, but whenever you want and it's a cool character you made yourself. Normally that's enough to satisfy people's curiosity, but I have been asked further questions like what is it about the costume that appeals to me? And that's a tough one to summarize. But now I can use the Masked Singer as a comparison. It's also very helpful when trying to explain fursuiting to someone who is already pre-convinced that furries are terrible, horrible people and you'd have an easier time arguing with a brick wall. They might just be a little bit less apprehensive when they learn that actual celebrities are vouching for the same appeals that fursuiters are. Furries and fursuits have been appearing a lot in mainstream media lately and it's always an interesting surprise when it unexpectedly pops up. There's an extremely popular talk show called The Ellen DeGeneres Show. I assume most of you guys have probably heard of that one, in which they'll just throw in some random games here and there to make things a bit more exciting. Recently, they decided to do their own spin-off of The Masked Singer called The Masked Dancer. There's another show that people love, The Masked Singer. Have you seen The Masked Singer? Okay. It's a singing competition, but all the singers wear big uh, masks. It's basically a furry convention at a karaoke bar, is what it is. It's a big hit on Fox, people love it, so that's why I came up with something similar. And since we haven't been sued yet, let's play another round of The Masked Dancer. Same sort of thing, just dancing instead of singing, and they immediately reveal the person afterwards. A little while ago, I was just chilling and watching it when... Wait a minute. That, that's actually a fursuit. Like, literally. I, I've seen that before. Who made it? Why is it here now? What? I rushed to Twitter and we quickly deducted that this fursuit was one of the fursuits made for the furry episode of the TV show, Lucifer. What is that? Like a mascot? No, it's a furry suit. I know, furries get a bad rap, but they're almost never sexual. I mean, most of the time, totally wholesome. If that's what you were thinking. They actually did an incredible job with that episode, like, more than I could say if the last time furries appeared on a crime-related TV show. Lucifer's set designer really did their research and created a full-on furry corner atmosphere and even got actual fursuiters to appear as extras. I'm not sure who made the fursuits for the actors, but dang, do they look amazing. I definitely would love to dedicate a whole video to talking about this episode, so let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But yeah, both Lucifer and Ellen are distributed by Warner Brothers, so it wouldn't surprise me if they share some of their costume departments. The brown fursuit they made appeared on the Masked Dancer as well, and it is wild how much this looks like an actual fursuit dance competition that you'd find at a furry con, like right down to going up and dancing at the judges table. This last decade, we really have seen a lot of fursuits make their way to the mainstream, such as the Moscow hockey team that actually has a mixed candy fursuit as their mascot. And now with the Masked Singer skyrocketing in popularity, I think we're about to see our fandom explode into some new members soon. Could you imagine if one of the Masked Singer contestants actually became a fursuiter? Like, I would lose my mind. Let me know in the comments what you think of all this. Like, I don't think fursuiting will ever be normalized, but I am enjoying seeing my niche hobby appreciated by some of the big guys and not just being used for some cringy clickbaity news story. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!